To start us off this morning, I, our BI intelligence research team, Kevin Gallagher and Rob Elder and I have put together 14 things we think you'll wanna know about the future of the media business and media, so we'll jump right into that. Some of them are quick, some of them are deeper. Um, we'll starting with the most important one, which is we are reaching an inflection point in the US media industry that is a big change over the last 20 years. Uh, what does that mean? Well, stepping back, from the horrible news headlines that we see every day. Actually, if you take a long-term look, there are many things with humanity that are going really well. We are curing lots of diseases, child mortality is going down, and our relentless search for improved innovations and productivity is freeing up time. In fact, over the last 200 years, human beings have figured out how to save themselves in developed countries about four hours of work per day. And so you say, well, what does that have to do with media? Uh, the answer is, we have also answered the question of what we do with that time that we save work. Um, right now, we spend these four hours watching television. And in fact, the consulting firm Activate has recently done a very significant study of what people do all day, and it turns out that really what we do all day is multitask, we're doing many different things at once, and that 12 hours of every day, of the 31 hours of activity that we squeeze into 24 hours, um, is actually media and tech usage. There is some sleep in there, there's some work, there's some cooking and socializing, but most of the day is spent consuming media and technology. Um, so that is a lot. That has helped power the growth of the media industry in, in the United States and elsewhere over the last few years, the last few decades. And in fact, digital is now the most used medium of all. TV is still a prodigious four hours a day, but we're up to about six hours of digital. Um, so what's changing? Well, what's changing is the big driver of the digital growth over the last 20 years has been the connection, first in desktop and then of mobile, of pretty much everybody in the developed world. Um, we are now all connected, and we all have a finite amount of time, so the addition of new people in developed countries is not gonna drive that much more time, and in fact, when Activate did its study, what it concluded is that over the next five years, we're only going to add another of 18 minutes of media consumption versus the six hours or so that we have added over the past 20 years. So a 1% growth rate. So, so what does that mean? It just means that there is finite time or finite number of providers. Um, we're not going to have this big growth engine that we've had over the past 20 years. Um, digital will continue to take share. Analog media is continuing to move to digital across all media, that will continue, but the rate at which it is growing will slow. In fact, we think it'll only grow about 2% this year in terms of total time. Meanwhile, as we all know, the internet is destroying a lot of the geographical and media protectors that have protected a lot of legacy media over the past century. You look at newspapers, they were for a long time protected in their geographical uh, niches, national and local, same with cable, media were separated, those laws are coming apart, and the internet has now basically created this world where everything in the world that is produced for media is a click away, everybody is competing with everybody else, it doesn't matter what media you came from, we're all competing for that five hours. So a, an already intense competition is now reaching this in, in hyper intense level. Um, and the something that any media company obviously has to deal with. And then lastly, what we're finding is that advertisers, for understandable reasons, are actually deciding that they want to work with fewer media companies. They want to work with bigger partners that can solve their problems all over the world rather than hundreds of smaller companies. And consumers are embracing subscriptions online, but they don't want dozens of them. What we want are a few big subscriptions that do everything for us. So what does all this mean? Well. There was this dream sometimes that this new media industry is gonna be a thousand media companies, there will be no concentration of power. That is proving to be one of many incorrect assumptions about this medium. Um, so we are likely to see lots more consolidation. Some folks think that's good, some folks think it's bad, uh, but it is going to happen. Uh, and so we have a lot of that to look forward to. So that could be regarded as bad news. Now that we have that out of the that way, we'll go to the good news. Um, the good news is humans will always want great media and they will want it wherever, whenever they happen to be. They will want to talk about it, they will want to share it, and they will do it in the most convenient way possible. And our new technologies are fantastic at that, including platforms, hardware, screens, everything. 
this isn't going away. We know what people do with the time that they free up, and that is consume media and communicate. Third, the peak media phenomenon is only a developed world phenomenon. We still have four billion people to come online. They will consume a lot more media, so internationally, huge opportunities there. Fourth, digital ad spending is still growing. Ad spending tends to lag attention by about five years. So if we are actually maxing out the amount of time we spend consuming media each day, we still have five years of advertising catching up with that. And in Asia and other areas, it's growing extraordinarily quickly. So big opportunities there. In fact, Asia Pacific is now projected to be the biggest ad market going forward for digital ads in the world, which is amazing, passing the blue line, which is the United States and, and North America. So the opportunities are in the East. Go East, young people, to change and update the old phrase. Um, Secondly, digital is very much a global business. It used to be that TV networks were confined to their particular areas, newspapers, same as I said before. Now the big media companies, including the big platforms, are very much global. Business Insider had an amazing moment last month where our international readership and viewership passed our US for the first time. Extraordinary to see that. So we really are developing global opportunities, and we're only at the beginning of that. The fifth point in the 14 things we think you want to know about the future of media is that what we would describe as modern TV networks, the OTT networks, will increasingly dominate video distribution over time. We all know that the decline of pay TV is accelerating. Every quarter, more and more people, quote, cut the cord and satisfy themselves with what's available online or through Netflix or Hulu and, and others. That will likely continue. It's not a collapse by any means, small percentages, but it will continue over time. Then younger TV viewership in particular is collapsing. If you look at all over TV ratings and viewership, what you find is that it's actually hanging in there pretty well, and the rate of decline has slowed. But when you get into the demographics of that, what you find is that old people, like me, who grew up watching television, still occasionally come home and turn on the television. We also multitask with our, both our laptop, in my case, and phone at the same time. But we turn on the TV, maybe watch sports. So older people have actually increased above 50 years old their, media, their TV consumption a little bit <clears throat> per day um, over the last five years. But everybody younger than that is rapidly watching less and less. In fact, the really younger demographics are down 40% over the past five years. So TV is really fragmenting. It's becoming older. Uh, meanwhile, modern TV networks, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, others, growing incredibly rapidly across all demographics. Why is that? We all know they are simply more convenient. You can watch them anywhere, anytime. You can watch whatever you want to watch. Um, it's just much easier. And importantly, right now, they are a much better value than legacy TV. In fact, if you look at the cost of Netflix to a consumer per hour of consumption, it's about one quarter the cost of your legacy cable TV subscription. So there is a long way to go in terms of pricing power, in terms of value. That is also accelerating the adoption of these modern TV networks. And the other thing that this is doing, because they reach so many more people when, at full scale, like Netflix, is the content budgets um, are now beginning to rival and will soon exceed those of traditional networks. Five years ago, Netflix was a, considered a joke still by the entertainment industry, TV industry. In this year, uh, Netflix's content budget will almost rival ESPN. Next year, it will be bigger than that. Uh, Amazon and Hulu and others are right behind them. So there was no longer this big money barrier. In fact, the economics of these global modern TV networks will ultimately allow them to spend many multiples of what the traditional TV networks can spend. Just a little bit more context. Five years ago, everyone thought, OK, fine, but these are terrible businesses. They'll never work. You can't monetize this content. Nobody cares. And, and TV networks will rule anything. Now, if you look at Apple and Netflix, the two top lines here, uh, relative to a, an average cable network, you can already see that the businesses themselves are colossal. Um, YouTube, again, the butt of many jokes only five years ago, now dwarfs what was considered big media when I got into this business, which was CBS network. And CBS, as you can see, the green line is declining every year. YouTube is soaring. Sky is the limit there. So already, these companies have blown past um, and have a, a really uninterrupted future going forward. 
It's not just TV, digital radio, games every year. Again, the same, more convenient, want what you want anywhere uh, aspect of it that you don't have with radio. And podcasting is still very small. In fact, I would say there's more hype around podcasting than the reality, but the spending is growing rapidly. Content choices are growing rapidly, so we should continue to see this eat away at traditional radio over the next few years. Number six in the 14 things. There is this theory or hope or dream among a lot of media companies who have struggled to make the economics of text-based digital media work that video is going to save everything. So you hear all the time, we are going to pivot to video and save ourselves. This is crazy. Uh, video is every bit as difficult to make a living in, in fact, even more so in many cases than text. It is very different. It is not just simply a pivot, okay, we'll make video now. It's very, very hard and expensive to make compelling video the same way it is to make text stories that stand out in this huge sea of media. So I would respectfully suggest that the pivot to video will not be saving a lot of companies that can't figure out how to make it in text. And there is another theory that people are espousing these days that is also nuts, which is the idea that all media will soon be video. No one will read anymore, no one will listen to anything. I think if you all look at how you consume media, you will find that there are some stories that can only be told in a narrative investigative article, better told with words. Other stories, it's way better if you see it. That's where video is great. Some stories are awesome with still photographs. Some things we want to listen to, we can't look at anything. So all of these story formats will, will continue to exist and do very well. Another theory you hear is, no, we are not going to reach peak media because we now have these new amazing things that are going to immerse us in media even more, such as smart speakers, Alexa in every room, Siri in every room will have that much more media, and self-driving cars that will create many more media hours. They will create a little bit, but not a lot. Why? Smart speaker users do say, yes, we consume a little bit more music, a little bit more news, but Really, when you think about what a smart speaker is, it is just a remote control that you could turn on the radio that was already there um, or the stereo that was already there. It's not adding something new. That time is usually already filled with music, news, and, and so forth. So incremental, but not a lot more. Cars, people do spend five weeks a year commuting. That is a lot of time, but drivers already listen to the radio and other forms of audio while they are doing that. And any passenger in a car, any head of the family will recognize that nobody else in the car is listening to the radio because they are all consuming whatever media they want on their phone. So there is already tremendous media consumption going on in cars. There will be a little bit more as the driver can multitask, but not a lot more. So this is why we're still only looking at 18 minutes more. Number nine, augmented reality is the future. It will soon be everywhere. I'm sure Nick Bell will have something to say about that with Snapchat next. Virtual reality, on the other hand, has been a bit overhyped. Um, it will be in the foreseeable future a great training aid, it'll be great for gaming, but it's not gonna suddenly become a mainstream technology. It's just too big, expensive, cumbersome, um, and ultimately augmented reality in the next few years is gonna be the thing that everybody focuses on. But good news is there is still a huge and unfolding media opportunity, and that is social stories. If you look at the video consumption on the many social networks, including YouTube now, just extraordinary quarter over quarter growth. Video in particular is doing amazingly well. Those of you who have consumed and made some of these will know that this is a very different kind of story. It's not TV. It's certainly not web video. It's different kind of distribution. There are many different, small different things, but they add up to a lot. These things look easy to make, but they are not, um, as anybody who has experimented with them. So, But if you look around, at least my kitchen table in the morning, it's no longer people are reading newspapers. They are now with their phones, going through Instagram, going through Facebook, Snapchat, consuming huge amounts of things. And the great thing is you can tell any kind of story in these. It's extraordinary. So just to give you a quick example, if you didn't see this last week, this was a video we made that was viewed by 70 million of you. Um, they now have seat belts for pets in cars. Who knew? This dad thought that the carrier was fine. They would be safe in that in a crash. As the video will show us momentarily, um, in fact, the carrier is not safe in a crash um, at all. They've done sled tests. Here you have it.
Yeah. So seatbelt for your pet. Uh, one thing that I was struck by here is it, for some reason they can't sit on their tail. They have to be propped up. The tail has to be dangling down. But this is the sort of thing that you see again and again. So we can watch the rest of the pet video later, but maybe you missed the walking starfish. This is what they look like on land. One of the stories that we're so excited about recently is you can tell these mini nature docks like this where, again, we don't have a half an hour, but we can certainly learn about some cool animal in, in the few minutes that we do have. Um, and this is what starfish look like when they are on land. So lots more where that came from if you want to see them. Number 11 of the 14 things, the duopoly that we hear so much about, using with, usually with gnashing of teeth and whining from a lot of media companies who preferred the old world where they were a lot more powerful in and of themselves. Um, the duopoly is a fact of life and it is not new. This is the important thing. Yes, if you look at global media, it is Google, Facebook, and other. They are swallowing most of the world of advertising, but Big distributors have always had huge power in the media industry. Let us be thankful, in fact, that it is not a monopoly, which cable was for a long time, or the three broadcast networks controlling all of the spectrum. That was media power. Here, you actually do have the ability to reach people, even if you are not, in fact, part of Google, Facebook, or, or one of the other platforms. Then secondly, Big media distributors need great media. There is a symbiotic relationship here. And in fact, if you go back in the history of the cable industry, what you found is that first thing that happened is we hooked up all the houses, we got the distribution platform in place, and then it created this mechanism for the creation of 500 networks on top of that, because the cable companies need content. Yes, there's always an argument about who's in charge, who's more powerful, who's the better business model. In this case, there's no question who has the better business model, but we need each other. So it's not either or, it is both. And one of the things that most folks focus on is that the big platforms, including Facebook and Google, are now paying out billions of dollars a year to media companies for their content. They're doing this through a variety of ways, um, but ultimately, this is likely to increase every year. They will seek the best content, especially as they get more controlling over what's going over their networks. So media companies, stop whining and start partnering. 12, distributors like Facebook and Google and others, they are going to increasingly need to take more responsibility for what is shown on their networks. Don't need to go into it, but the fact that Russia may have played with our election through the use of our networks and we didn't know anything about it, imagine if that had happened with TV, if suddenly Russia had taken control of NBC and used it to sway our election. It'd be unthinkable, there would be outrage, there would be control, so forth. There are many other things like that, the spread of face new, fake news. Platforms, ultimately, if they want to be family friendly, are going to have to get much more aggressive about this, and, and that is already happening. 13 of 14. We are finally, after 10 years or 15 years, starting to see real innovation in digital video ads. Um, one thing Jeff Bezos said to me when he invested in Business Insider a long time ago, he said, God, you guys have the greatest videos. This was before he bought the Washington Post and had to figure out how to fund it. He said, but you know what? It's like 30 second video and there's a 30 second ad in front of it. Like, you know, that's not a great experience. And I said, I, you know, I agree. That's not a great experience. But here's the perspective from advertisers. They spend a million dollars creating this amazing ad. They want to put it out there, especially because people aren't watching TV anymore. So I can certainly understand it, but it's not great. Fortunately, we are now getting evolution on this, because we can all agree 30-second ads are not great on the mobile phone when you're hanging in there to watch a 20-second clip. And in our survey of consumers, they are much more receptive to skippable ads and short ads when they have control over their device. So we're now finally seeing more and more clients go this way, and agencies start to embrace this. YouTube said it's skippable ads, very successful. People only watch them if they're interested. Sometimes they watch them all the way to the end, six minutes. Brands and agencies are also finally embracing what I would describe as digital length ads, six seconds and even shorter. Maybe you've seen some of these. If you haven't, it turns out you can tell great stories in six seconds. You don't need 30. So imagine you're scrolling on your phone and you see something like this. Tell your armpits to stop crying like a baby with Old Spice sweat defense. You got it. You don't need more than that. No question about what product is being advertised there. I know about it. I'm checking the trailer.
I saw it, I heard it, I want it. Krispy Kreme, Australia. And lastly. So I would respectfully submit, you can do a lot with six seconds. And these solve a lot of the problems with current digital advertising. You want to be able to put it everywhere. You want to be able to scale it. You want to be able to reuse, reuse the assets. Ultimately, as the industry embraces this, hopefully we will finally have a native digital ad. Um, so finally, number 14. I am often asked and have been often asked over the past 10 years, you know, can, does advertising work online? Can you support yourself on that? No one will ever pay for anything. Oh, they will pay for things, so maybe subscriptions are better. Is it subscriptions or ads which work? Commerce, is that fair? Hardware, could you ever fund a media business with that? These questions have been answered. There is no right model for digital media. They all work. It is fantastic. We are in a golden age for this new media ecosystem growing very rapidly. Yes, it's hyper competitive. Yes, we all have to earn our attention every day um, as consumers deserve us to try to do, but it is a golden age um, and ultimately the future of media is getting better all the time.